Hello and welcome my dear students to the most requested video on my channel Mathematics Made Easy. This video is a much watched and uh, specially requested for all my grade 10 elite students. This is part one of calculus revision that we are doing today and I have taken some questions from end of term coverage part one. So very very important video watch it till the end and don't forget to like share and subscribe to my channel if you found the video useful. So today's video is taken from majorly topics of lesson 9, 4 and 9, 5 where you are going to look at derivatives of exponential, logarithmic and trigonometric functions. We are going to be using in this session today power rule, product rule, chain rule, quotient rule, all of that and along with that the derivatives of exponential, logarithmic and trigonometric functions. So in this video I have taken from end of coverage question number points 20, 21 and 22 which are given on the following pages. There are a lot of questions so this video is going to be a heavy duty one. Make sure you watch it till the end if you want to score better and great marks in your coming exams video with a very important rule which is chain rule. I have explained this chain rule in great detail in one of my videos. I will put the link in the description box and you can see and watch this video. It will help you recall all the rules of differentiation, all the formulas which are important and will help you to solve question and it will help you understand the chain rule and use it to differentiate composite functions. So must watch video again that will help you clarify your concepts of differentiation. Now let's come to the formula sheet. So the first formula sheet that we'll be using in the session today and will be very helpful for your exams is the power rule. This rule is applicable when you have a variable raised to some power. The rule says the power comes down and the power in the variable reduces by 1. So just to take a quick example, I'm taking the example of 4x cube. So here if you want to differentiate this with respect to x, then you have two terms, 4 the number and x cube the variable. So 4 will come out of the derivative and you will just uh, differentiate x cube. So it has a power, that's how you know you have to apply power rule. So power rule says the power comes down. So this power 3 will come down. So it will become 4 multiplied with 3 that gives you a 12 and in the variable the power will reduce by 1 so x square so 12 x square is the derivative what do we say this is the derivative or the first derivative of 4 x cubed Next rules coming in the formula sheet are the product and the quotient rule. Again, very, very important. Just remember product rule is applied when there is multiplication or product happening in differentiation and question rule is applied when division is happening. So these are the two important rules in every question of differentiation. Mostly we use the product and the question rule. So for product rule, remember if you are di uh, differentiating fx multiplied with gx, you take one function. So like this is first function, second function. So derivative of first function multiplied by second function plus derivative of second function multiplied with first function. That's your product rule. Next is question rule. You have a numerator, you have a denominator. So when you differentiate it with respect to the variable, the derivative uh, is in the denominator having a square power in the numerator. You first take derivative of numerator multiplied with denominator as it is and subtract from that the first function fx numerator multiplied with derivative of denominator. So you please learn these formulas. These are very useful. Must learn, must use in any question of derivative. Let's see some applications. Okay, so let's solve some questions now. This is the first question that I'll be doing with you. This is your classwork. So find the equation of the line which is tangent to the function fx. The function fx is given to you here in terms of x and a point is given to you. So this is the point. So at this point, x value is 1, y value is minus 2. That's the point. This is the function given and then you verify your answer graphically. So let's Solve answer 50. So f of x is given as 3x square plus 2x minus 7. It's a polynomial function. 
we need to write the equation of tangent so we'll use y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1 this is the point slope form where x1 y1 is the point so the point is given to you here so your x1 y1 point is given as 1 comma minus 2 so from there you know that x1 is 1 and y1 the y coordinate is minus 2 now you need m m is nothing but slope of tangent so how do you get this slope you take the derivative of fx or d by dx of this given function so the function is given to you we can just do its derivative now it has three terms so by algebra of derivatives it will be equal to the derivative of all three now we are going to apply the rules for differentiation to each of the derivative so what is the derivative of 3x square there is a power so we apply power rule power comes down reduces by 1 2x derivative is 2 7 is a constant so its derivative is going to be 0 so this is 6x plus 2 and now we need to calculate this slope m at the point x equal to 1 so when x is 1 6 multiplied uh, with 1 plus 2 is 8 so you have got the slope you have got the point let's substitute here and get our answer so the equation of the tangent is y minus y1 so plus is equal to h times x minus x1 you can simplify this expression to get your equation of tangent line to the function fx at the given point In a similar way, let's now do question 52. Again, you have to do the same thing. The point is given to you. This is the point. So your x1 is 5. Your y1 is decimal 1.75. Now notice the coefficients are decimal, but that will not change the method. So when we try to write the equation, we use the same formula. y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. So y minus now the point is 1.75 equal to m times x minus 5. Now we need the m. If we get m, we get the equation. So m is dy by dx, the first derivative, or f prime of x. So let's find its derivative. And when we do derivative, I'm just writing the formula. And now because you know that when we try to find the derivative of the three terms, it is the derivative of the individual term. So this time I'm going to write the answer directly using power rule. Now I need to put the value. How much is value of x? 5. So we are going to substitute negative this 2 times 5 plus 1.5. So this gives you 1.5 minus 2 which is negative 0.5 so that's your value of m put it here in the equation and get your answer as y minus 1.75 is equal to negative 0.5 times x minus 5 now you can also simplify this expression and that will give you the final answer hope you have understood how you find the equation of the tangent at the given point using the concept of slope and using the concept of derivatives using the various rules given in the formula sheet. Now comes another important rule, chain rule. I've already made a video on it and I advise you to watch it before you go on further so that you understand chain rule in great detail, but I will repeat some important points. So you apply chain rule for the differentiation or finding the derivative of composite function so in composite function you have an inner and outer function for example the inner function here is gx whereas the outer function here is fx so there are two functions involved and when you do the derivative of the composite function first you take the derivative of outside as you can see so first you take derivative of outer function and then you multiply it with the derivative of inner function so that's what you do and then you multiply the result for chain rule let's see some examples let's first do a simple example so we'll do question number five 
this one so it has two parts a and b you have to differentiate each of them so let's do answer of 5 e first so here f of x is given to you as x cube minus x and the power here is 3 so definitely you see power 3 so power rule will be applied also since you have an inner function inner function is x cube minus x and an outer function which is the cube function two functions are there so you will also go for chain rule so the two rules you'll use here is power and chain rule let's see how so power rule uh, and chain rule says that if you want to find derivative f prime of x first take the differentiation of outer function means you'll apply power rule first power comes down inside function as it is and power rule power reduces one now you differentiate the inside function also so when you differentiate inside function again because it has a power the power will reduce you get 3x square minus 1 so this is your answer for a part let's do b part for b part you have a radical sign so you can write the function in forms of a power as 1 by 2 this is positive square root so it can be written in this way and now it's easy for us to apply power rule so power rule and chain rule again together will be applied first we apply power rule so power comes down x square plus 4 inside function as it is power reduces by 1 and then you differentiate the inside function also so what this gives 1 by 2 times square root of x square plus 4 now you differentiate this again power rule it is 2x plus 4 so you can just cancel 2 from both sides so you will be left with x plus 2 divided by square root of x plus 4 on simplification so that's how you do question 5 let's also try question 7 it's a little tricky for all of you so I will do uh, question 7 also try question 6 yourself and check your answer okay so for question 7 again we will do the same process first we'll do the a part so we need f prime of t it has two functions now first function second function and they are multiplied so definitely for this question we will use product rule and because again like previous question it has uh, inside and outside function so we are going to use chain rule also by the way if you notice there are powers involved so because of powers we will also use power rule so this makes it a very important question I'm putting two stars no three stars because all three rules are used here and I feel this kind of a question can come for your exam so let's understand this important question so first in product rule you multiply uh, you use it for multiplication which is very true here so first you differentiate one function so I differentiate five um, I can first write in fact let me just make it simple for you I am just writing f of t function let me remove the derivative for the time being just to make it simple for you and I am writing it as product of two functions gt and ht so what is the first function gt it is t to the power 5 what is the second function ht it is t 3 plus 2 and instead of radical I am going to write 1 by 2 just to make it easy now we can calculate their derivatives first of all so what are the derivatives for this since the power is 5 you apply power rule and get this again you have a power so you will apply power rule and when you apply power rule power reduces by 1 now that was the outside function inside you also have another function which is t cube plus 2 so when you differentiate that what do you get finally let's write t cube plus 2 and here it is 3 t square and plus 0 because it goes color so I will just leave it here so this is how you get the derivatives so for gt the derivative is g prime for ht the derivative is h prime now we can use product rule so product rule says first function as it is derivative of second function 
plus second function as it is derivative of first function. You can also change the order. So now I'll put the value gt is t5, h prime of t is this big value. So 1 by 2 in the denominator tq plus this. Excuse me for the lack of space that I have to write. So it's, as you can see, a pretty long question. HT, you have to be very careful with your calculations. So this is 1 by 2. I'm just putting up now the values. G prime of T is 5T to the power 4. Just you could simplify this a little bit more if you wish to. And that would give you the answer. So just let me make a nice boundary here so that we don't mix it up with part B. And again, in part B, you see multiplication. So you're going to fork for power rule, chain rule, and product rule, all three of them. So we'll do a similar process here. And we'll choose our GT as the first function and our HT as the second function. So this is nothing but t to the power 1 by 2 by the same logic. So its derivative will be 3t square. Here its derivative will be 1 by 2 square root of t. So let's do the differentiation by product rule now. So f prime of t is equal to, so I'm using this part of the product rule. It is also seen in the formula sheet, which I showed you towards the beginning of the class. Same thing. We are now doing the product rule and substituting the values. So what do we get here? GT is TQ plus 2. I'm taking it from here. HT, H prime T, G prime T, all of these values, and 1 by 2 square root of t plus now I'm going to put ht which is square root of t times 3t square. So that's how you get it. You may simplify it a little bit more, try to look, make it look nice, but then yes, the steps are this. So you have seen here how in this question we have applied product chain and power rule all together. Very, very important question. Let's do one last uh, long, big, important question from this slide on chain rule just to make you more comfortable. So here again, you have two functions fx and gx given, and for each of them, you have to give the derivative. So we are going to use now chain rule very, very quickly. So it says f prime of x is equal to first the outside function. So outside function has a power 2. So I write the same thing, x cubed plus this plus 2x as it is, and I reduce the power by 1, and then d by dx of the inside term, which is this one. So what does that give us? Let's simplify. So it gives us power minus 2 minus 1, which is power 3. So it is cube root in the denominator coming of this term. Okay, and yes, I have to be careful. The square root is not in the whole term. It is only in the first power. So now I'll put the bracket. And now we'll differentiate this term. Now this term is made up of two terms. So when you differentiate, you differentiate for this. And the derivative for here is 2. So be careful. Plus 2 I'm putting for this. And now I'm going to differentiate 1 by 2 square root and 3x square. So this is the derivative. Little complex question, a lot of derivatives involved. I hope you are getting the same answer. Let's do b part. For b part, you have the function x over x square plus 1 inside. Outside there is square root, so it means power is 1 by 2. So let's do its derivative. Its derivative would be outside function times power rule. So 1 by 2 minus 1 times d by dx of the inside function. So I'm going to go for question rule very, very soon. Quite obvious. So 1 by 2 and this power changes to negative. So negative. I'll change color negative 1 by 2. Now derivative of this, you see division, so you know the derivative would be applied using the division rule or the question root. So I'm going to take the denominator, square it, 
put it in the same way and then do the differentiation of numerator which is 1 then subtract x as it is do the differentiation of numerator which is 2x only 1 being 0 so this is 1 by 2 finally the power is having square root and reciprocal so I can replace in this way and in this bracket what we are getting let's just simplify it a little bit more so as it looks little nice so in numerator x square plus 1 minus 2x square so that means you can collect the like term and your final answer would be simplifying to give you this value the numerator reduces to 1 minus x square. Okay, that's where we stop. Uh, it is becoming a long video, so I'm going to stop here. 20 minutes video almost. So we'll do another part, uh, whatever is left in part 2. So stay glued to my channel so that you don't miss on part 2 of this session. In the session is end of term coverage part 2. We are going to do the end of term coverage in a lot of parts. Stay glued to my channel so that you don't miss out on part 2. Make sure you subscribe if you like the videos and found them useful. Like and share with your friends who are also going to give the term 3 final end of term exam on 13th of June. So we are two weeks left. Every day we have a new video coming up related to your end of term coverage. So make sure you press the bell icon so that you don't miss any notifications of upcoming videos. Until then, this is Ms. Ruchika signing off from today's session. See you in my next video. Bye students.